cataractcoach.com, cystoid macular edema. Why does this happen after cataract surgery? Let me tell you about a patient of mine. Here's the patient. Let's look through the data. Here's a scan of the right eye showing the refraction, a little bit of hyperopia, plus two. Shows the cornea, the topography, a little bit of astigmatism. Everything looks pretty routine there. I like it. Let's look at the left eye. Same thing. About a plus one, 25 hypero, a little bit of astigmatism. Topography looks clean, good ocular surface. Pupil size looks all very reasonable. I think this patient would be a good candidate for cataract surgery because the patient also has three plus nucleosclerosis. Let's flip the page here and let's see what we got here. On our next page, now we looked at the corneal tomography. So here's the right eye patient's corneal tomography. It's all looking pretty good. Minimal amount of astigmatism. That'll be easily addressed. Normal corneal pachymetry, normal curvature, normal uh, posterior surface of the cornea. All looks pretty good. Again, that is looking at the right eye. Let's do the same for the left eye. Here comes the left eye. Now let's flip the paper around. And for the left eye, it's going to be the same thing. Good looking scans, normal looking cornea, good pachymetry. Everything looks clean. I'm ready to do this cataract for this patient. Make this patient very happy. And so let's look at the rest of the pre-op scans, though, that we do ahead of time. And so now we also did some biometry for this patient. So here's the biometry. Both eyes are relatively the same. Typical accidents in the 23 uh, millimeter range. And AC depth about 2.6, 2.8. Everything looks pretty good. Lens thick is a little on the high side. Thick lens, 5.4 millimeters in each eye. Okay, not, not too unusual, but I'll take it. You can look at the pre-printed printout the, the, of, our, of our biometer. You can see what it suggests lens powers. They're all pretty much in agreement. As you know, very easy to do lens calcs on eyes that are average. With average eyes, all the forms come up with around the same answer, which is pretty good. It's okay. Time for some cataract surgery, but before we do it, let's just check ahead of time. Make sure it's normal looking optic nerve and normal macular. So there's the uh, macular in both eyes, and both look pretty healthy. Maybe a little bit of age related changes, but otherwise, no real epiretinal membrane, nice normal contour, normal thickness or pachymetry of that fovea. Everything looks pretty darn good, right eye and left eye. So I'm happy. That's good. This is all you know, This is all the pre-op testing. We're still in the pre-op period here. And we looked at the optic nerves in each eye. Uh, maybe a little bit of increase there on the cupping. This patient has been treated for glaucoma in the past. I can understand why. There are some glaucomatous looking changes here. There we go. I see that in both eyes. But again, nothing terrible. So for our case, we're going to do a cataract surgery, put in a monofocal lens. I think the patient will do great. So we do the cataract surgery pages 2020 on post-op day one. Comes back at post-op week one, and that's what I see. So this is post-op day one for the right eye, post-op week one for the left eye, and there's a lot of macular edema. Look at the pattern. Cystoid macular edema, there's big cysts there. This is very common um, to see after cataract surgery if there are pre-existing risk factors, epiretinal membrane, bad diabetic, other problems, but this guy had none of that. So look at the before on that left eye. And looks totally healthy, totally normal, nothing to be, to, to be expected in the post-op period. Patient definitely got both topical steroids and NSAIDs in the post-op period and still had that swelling. So that's the cystoid macular edema. So in this picture, both eyes are pseudophagic. The right eye is 20-20 and sees great. And the best corrected vision on the left eye is 20 out of 50. Believe it or not, that macula could still see 20 out of 50. So what do we do? While there are many ways of treating this, the conservative ways initially are to use topical treatment. So use perhaps a stronger steroid like diflupredinate, perhaps using it more often. But you can see you definitely need to resolve this. I sent the patient to a retina specialist. The retina specialist gave his input and said, yes, let's use stronger NSAID and steroids. And then look at this after another week. That's that same left eye. The macula cleaned up real nicely. And everything resolved. And so this patient had a beautiful outcome. So yes, you will get cystoid macular edema from time to time. And it can resolve. The patients will do fine. But you have to just keep in mind that this is a known complication. It can happen in even routine cases that go perfectly. It is more common in cases where there are complications, such as capsule rupture, etc., 
And then the other thing, it can happen if there's a pre-existing issue, cystoid macular edema, epiretinal membrane, or if the patient had CME in the first eye, they're much more likely, even as much as 50% chance of getting CME in the second eye.